Apart from the fact that we are growing food without soil, so there's no limitations that the soil can give, we're also giving them the advantages of using less water, we're occupying less space, but also not restricted by seasons, so you can grow food all year round. Imagine farming without soil, no rain, no big land, just water, light and innovation. You can start with your little potted plants and your substrates in your kitchen, in your bedroom window, wherever. Just start something and it grows. This sounds impossible, right? Well, not anymore. Founded by Mr. Smart Israel, this company operates in Rwanda and Nigeria, showing that African farming can be done anywhere, even without soil. Our mission at Smarter has been consistent over the last two years to mainstream technologies for sustainable agriculture on the African continent. If you love real innovation happening across Africa, go ahead and subscribe. We are telling the stories of people building the future right here at home. So we have four greenhouses, all running with hydroponic systems. Um, we have a greenhouse with grow bags, we have a greenhouse with our grow tower, we have a greenhouse with our dodge bucket, and then we have a couple of frames, a frames in the outdoor area where we grow our leafy vegetables. Today, we are stepping into one of their hydroponic farms right here in Nigeria to show you how they grow food using only water and why this might be the future for African farming. So we started off with providing solutions in the agri space which were not seen conventionally. One of the things that is not usually practiced here in Africa and as well as Nigeria is the hydroponic system of growing food. And that is a very big solution to a lot of problems that we face in our food production systems. So we thought, why not bring these things back home and bring solutions that can reduce post-harvest losses, enhance repro um, reproducibility, uh, reduce the amount of food that um, cannot be grown in particular seasons and enhance food that can be grown all year round. So that is what we are trying to, we are trying to do in Smarter Agritech. This farm started with only one goal, to make farming easier, cleaner and possible anywhere even without fertile land. Do you have any challenge convincing people what hydroponics was? So as you know, there's like a big divide that we're constantly, not just us, but a lot of innovators in the agri space industry in Nigeria right now is trying to close. Yeah. So there's a divide between the urban farmer and the commercial farmers. That's the large scale farmers and all of that. One of the challenges we encounter is getting people to adopt the technologies that were so far out of what they are used to. So our target as smallholder farmers because again they are more prone to these issues of um, agriculture in the climate space. They are prone to droughts, they are prone to flooding, they are prone to diseases of crop pests relating to soil and all of that. So we are trying to bridge the gap between um, the conventional smallholder farmer and the informed smallholder farmer. Here is how it works. Seeds are planted in nursery and when they sprout, they are moved into systems where their roots grow in nutrient-rich water. What is the process like from um, the early stage of these cabbages up to this stage here? Before transplanting? We have to reach the nursery. Okay. In the, the nursery, nursery from yeah. there? Yeah, the nursery. The, the substrate that is meant for raising nursery is called potting soil. Mm. But in the absence of potting soil, you can actually use uh, cocoa peats. Mm. So in this, on the farm here, here in Smarte, mm. uh, we raise our nursery using potting soil. It's expensive. But we use it because it will give us an effective, good and healthy uh, nursery. And if you want a good yield, you want a good yield, healthy, healthy nursery, you have to first of all uh, tackle the issue of raising it properly from the beginning. That's why we use uh, the most expensive means to raise our nursery. That's why our plants are actually always healthy, they are robust when it comes to uh, food production. And of course, the last house uh, was terminated in the space of, I think, eight months. It was supposed to terminate in the space of just six months, or we terminated in the space of eight months. You extend the date, the day for your termination when you see that your plants are still producing. But the ideal lifespan of especially bell peppers is six months. You terminate within six months. And sometimes, if you have issues of which we have not experienced here yet, you terminate earlier. So to think that we are terminating one month ahead of the termination day, it means that we are doing well. Because our plant keeps growing, if you check, they keep growing with fruits and with flowers. And that is what you are looking for. Your plant to keep mm. growing and not just growing leaves, but it should be productive. So the nursery, raising the nursery is key. The process, uh, what to do, uh, what to use, 
and then the variety of seed you use also matters. Was it difficult for you to convince people the difference between the hydroponics and traditional farming? Was it difficult? Yes, especially since about 75% of the population of Africa, Africa or Nigeria mm -hmm. as it is are middle farmers. That is smallholder farmers. So imagine coming to someone who has been farming for generations and generations mm. with, with autotop me methods that were passed on. But imagine coming to them with things that are very, very far out of their reach mm. with technology and its innovation. And again, because we're working with a hydroponic system with a soilless farm. Mm. So we had to first convince them that we could grow food and it does not have to be on the soil before we could convince them that the systems actually worked. Mm. And then once we've done that, we had to then get into the remote areas. We had to go to the people that actually need the technology because you can have a solution, but then you can have people that do not need it. So we had to get to the people that needed it. And of course, we have the 75, 70% of people who are, uh, who are currently making a living out of agriculture. So the market was large. We just had to get into the people. So of course, it, it was a thing to convince them. But then once we could show them that our systems were efficient, our systems were actually um, yielding results. Every big idea faces its own challenges. But with big visions and efforts, small ideas like this can grow into a big change. So we have four greenhouses all running with hydroponic systems. Yeah. Um, we have a greenhouse with grow bags, we have a greenhouse with our grow tower, we have a greenhouse with our dodge buckets, and then we have a couple of frames, a frames in the outdoor area where we grow our leafy vegetables. So I see you farm mostly bell peppers. We farm mostly bell peppers and leafy vegetables. We farm lettuce, cabbages, and carrots. Is, it, is there a reason why? Okay, so like I've said earlier, um, we're also trying to run a successful business which means we have done market um, analysis, we have evaluated what is in high demand, and we've also evaluated our ability to move them. So in that regard, we have conditioned our growth system to be able to offset the orders that we can get. So we're able to feed them continuously. One of the advantages we give to our clients is that there's an all year round supply. Yeah. So there's never a time where we cannot offset their supply. Hydroponic farms like these are helping Africa grow its own food, reducing importation and creating jobs. Is hydroponics cheaper than traditional farming? Again, then I have to bring in the mindset of the farmer being a business person. Yeah. And for every business person, you look at the gains in the long run. So while hydroponics is not as cheap as to start a conventional farm first, mm. when you look at the return on investment, it shows that it is actually a smart choice for a farmer to take. Now this is, for a lot of commercial farmers, these are the things that they look at before they make investments on their farms. We're trying to bring that now to the smallholder farmers. We're trying to first educate them on the amount of, on the amount that can be saved, the returns that they get when they've invested in this. Yes, it is capital intensive, but in the long run, it is also a very good investment. More profitable. Yes, more profitable. So what type of crops do you farm? Um, here in your farm. So um, this is our demo site in Nigeria located in Jos okay. and on this farm we grow leafy vegetables, we grow a lot of trial vegetables as well. We've tried purple cabbages, these are currently white cabbages on our A-frame here, mm. uh, white cabbages. We have about 3,000 stands of them. And white we, cabbages are yeah. different from the regular ones? These are white cabbages. These are regular white cabbages. Okay. Then we have purple cabbages, yeah, which are the two that we have run trials for. We, this trial was successful, so we were able to transfer the 3,000 stands of white cabbages on our A-frame. In the other greenhouses, we have our Dutch buckets where we grow our um, capsicum variety of bell peppers. So we grow our bell peppers, we grow lettuce, we also grow our cabbages as well. And like I've just said, we, grow, we run a lot of trials for vegetables such as green beans, cucumbers, seeded and non-seeded. Also the smooth or the rough ones as well. So we constantly run trials to see the things that can be grown on our systems and to show that they actually work. Oh, so those trials are because you want to see what will work on the hydroponics? Yes, we know that they work. We want to see how much they work. work. Yes. Okay. We want to put our mouth where our money is. Of course. How is it said? <laughs> My name is Nick Emmanuel. I'm the head of operation Smartel Agritech. This is our demo site at JOS, Nigeria. So I noticed you grow this in buckets. Mm. So why do you grow this in buckets? Okay, these are Dutch bucket systems. It is a rare system, you just don't get it anywhere. And then it is used here because of its efficiency when it comes to yield, mm. growth, mm. and the, the health of the plant. This is one of the 
most efficient system or practices you can do even though it's capital intensive but everything here is precise the fatigation the level of cocoa pits inside the aeration and everything everything is precise we use three pipes okay so these are drip pipes these are drip what pipes. do they do here yeah this serves as a drip okay you can see so when we on the fatigation uh, switch from there mm. it pumps water with pressure and then it comes out of this particular edge here that is being placed here directly at the root. Okay. It uses ninety percent of the water we give it. Mm. There is no loss of water. water. No water lost. The water that comes in is the water that the plant utilizes. And the good thing, the one of the, or the other good thing about this is, uh, it collects excess water. There is no water waste. It's recycled. Okay, so there's water. There's water. When the water is too, too much, it's much. There is a small hole down here. That is connected to this white pipe. Okay. You can see it. Okay. This particular hole here collects the excess water. Okay. To this pipe. Okay. And this pipe takes it back to the tank. Tank. Okay. So there's no wastage. Here. There's no wastage at all. There's okay. no wastage. There's no wastage at all compared to the normal traditional, traditional irrigation systems. Water gives the plants everything they need, so they grow faster, cleaner, and healthier than in soil. What grows best in hydroponics in Nigeria? Hydroponics, yeah. basically anything from fruit trees to leafy vegetables. Okay. So this A-frame system, one of our four hydroponic systems, we have uh, this A-frames right, with NFT pipes. Okay. NFT meaning nutrient film technique. There's a thin film of nutrients inside of the um, pipe where the plant roots are suspended in, in a nutrient rich solution. So they take up what they need. So how it works basically is there's a reservoir up there. So from there, the nutrient rich solution flows down to the top of the pipes and then it goes down. So they get the even amount all the time. So these are also cabbages? Yes, they are also so cabbages. So planting cabbage in this A frame and the, the other one, what do you call it? The, the growth grow towers. The, the, What's the, the difference? Tower. The difference is, okay, for that tower, right, it uh, promotes the circulation of, of oxygen. So they go faster there and that's just the basic difference. How many type of hydroponics system do you have? Here we have four, four. Right, but there are a lot. There's Kratky, Deep Water Culture. For here we only have four. There's this uh, E-frames, e Grow Tower, Dutch Buckets and Grow Bags. Grow Bags. Those are the four systems we have here. Okay. What's the best? There isn't one best system, like one size fits all, right? Mm -hmm. I would say, okay, like this um, E-frame system is best suited for leafy vegetables. Okay, yes. leafy vegetables. The uh, Grow Tower also for leafy vegetables. It can grow other different plants, but basically works better for leafy vegetables okay. so these are net cups where the seedlings where we drop the seedlings into where they go from let me take one out so you see oh can i see yes it? yes oh. white roots are healthy roots okay yes white yes. See, um roots are healthy white roots, roots are healthy okay. roots. so when they are no white they are not healthy they are not healthy okay. usually because of lack of oxygen, oxygen. it's on brown and soggy so these ones were transplanted last week. Last week, yes. How long does it take for this to grow to the mature stage? The from anywhere from two to three months. The full lifespan from seeding to harvest. Wow. What's the difference between it and growing in soil? Growing in the soil for the the span. Okay. You mean how long it takes? How to, long it takes? How long yeah, it takes? Harvest. To, well, it would take around around that same time. Around that, but we can expect two months for this and for three this. months in the ground in the soil. This is more than farming. It's a new mindset that can inspire the city, the whole continent, and the next generation of farmers. How do you handle water on the farm here? So we have a borehole, mm. which helps us to pump water through the systems. But because we don't need a lot of water, most of it is stored. So we have reserves, and then we have water that we use constantly. Okay. So we have our main tanks, we have our piping systems, which enables us to use little water at maximized rates. So all of the plants are fed well, and we do not have situations where there are shortages or drought. So where do you see the future of agriculture or hydroponics particularly in the next five to ten years in Africa? We already have people advancing so much. We mm. have Israel who are constantly making giant strides in the hydroponic space. Mm. In the next ten years, I see Africa going even bigger. I see massive innovation. I see crazy ideas that are actually going to prefer solutions that we never thought were going to exist in the shortest time period. So do you see this technology being used in different parts of Africa? Yes, yes. I believe so. Um, one of the places that we're trying to push for technology, these technologies to go into are places where there 
are disadvantages for growing food. So disadvantaged communities or disadvantaged situations like IDP camps, um, villages where there are um, lack of access to seeds, water, resources, and mm. all of this. Water. We can, yes, we can set up our systems in places like this and just ensure that they have the chance, the fighting chance to against hunger. So they have a chance to grow food and they are given a leverage against hunger as it is. Mm. For a young entrepreneur okay. that's watching this video mm. in Africa, what's your advice to them? For a lot of people, they've always used capital costs as an excuse, mm. but then it doesn't have to be as limiting. Funds should not be the issue. I would say, just start. I know it's easier said than done. A lot of people say, oh, just start and the vision will fund itself and a lot of the things that are said. But really, just start. You can start with your little potted plants and your substrates in your kitchen, in your bedroom window, wherever. Just start something and it grows. Just start. That's my takeout. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have to be big. Mm -mm. All right. So and start small and scale. And scale. Mm -hmm. What are the most rewarding moments for you since you started this journey? So I think with every cycle, mm -hmm. The growth process amazes me. That's really this, my satisfaction for this. So for every farmer, of course, it's the same, the harvest period. Mm. But then for me, it is like there's a continuous satisfaction because I'm able to grow all year round. So there's really no down moment for me. So there are no moments where you don't farm? No, I farm all year round. Yeah. I farm all year round. I mean, that, that's one of the advantages of, yes. of this, if not the most. Yes, yeah. it is the most <laughs> important advantage as a farmer and as a business person, because then it means I also make profit all year round. Who would have thought you could farm like this? If you believe this is the future for Africa, please share this video and don't forget to subscribe for more inspiring videos from my channel. I'll see you in the next video and bye.